Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. Welcome to the seventh video in this series on simple harmonic motion. We're going to solve a simple harmonic motion problem using the skills and the toolkit we learned in videos five and video six. So first we're going to talk about radians and why that's important um, and then go through our example. So you recall that one of the pieces of important information for our symbol harmonic motion system is the angular frequency, which has the symbol omega, that Greek omega there. That's measured in radians per second. Now you'll notice that that's in every single one of these equations. Um, either we're finding y, which is displacement, or v, velocity, or a, acceleration. And because we're doing a trig function, and a trig function is a sine, or a cos, or a tan, and inside that function is an omega t, so you see the first equation there, y equals a sine omega t, and then we've got v equals a omega cos omega t, because there's an omega in every single one of these sines or coses. Your calculator needs to be set up to be doing its calculation in radians. Otherwise, it'll just look up the table for the values in degrees and you'll get a completely crazy answer. Now the issue is, is that other parts of this physics course require your calculator to be in degrees. You have to work out some um, components of forces and draw yourself a triangle and you'll give a, an angle, say 30 degrees or something, and so you use your sine and your cos with the 30 degrees. So you have to be able to go back and forth between the radians and degrees. So simple harmonic motion is always in radians and the rest is in degrees and you have to know where it is on your calculator to do that. So you should make sure you ask your teacher if you're not sure how to do that. Okay, in our example we've got the, the same situation that was set up before, but um, let's say it's starting at this pendulum starting from the left and we want to know where the pendulum is after five seconds, uh, 0.5 seconds and what's its velocity after 0.5 seconds. So we'll quickly go through this process again of choosing the correct equation. We need the important info, which is given to us, the amplitude and the angular frequency of 1.5 radians a second. We need to set up our coordinate system, so zero goes in the middle. We choose our positive to be the side the um, object starts at. If it doesn't start at one of the sides, it starts in the middle, then you're free to choose which side you want to be positive. I've chosen the left to be positive. Our graphs, because it starts at maximum displacement, it's going to be thinking a cos graph, and I use that cos graph to choose my family of equations, the ones that start with y equals a cos omega t. Okay, I've set all of my information up, so now I can just solve it. So where's the pendulum after t equals 5 seconds? I use that first displacement equation, y equals a cos omega t. Put my numbers in, so a is the amplitude, 0.2, the length we don't use is not the amplitude. Um, the length is useful for calculating the time period, but I've already given you the angular frequency here anyway. So cos and then um, omega t, 1.5 times the time, 0 0.5 seconds, gives me 0 0.146 meters. Now, my coordinate system says that middle is 0 and to the left is positive. This is a positive number, so my... Um, pendulum is still out to the left and it's 0.146 meters from the middle. The second question was asking what's the velocity at that point, so I go back to my family of equations and look at the velocity equation, which in that family was negative a omega sine omega t, put the numbers in and I get out velocity equals negative 0.204 meters per second, so what the heck does that mean? That means it's going at 0.2 meters a second, but my coordinate system, which hasn't changed, the negative direction is to the right. So my pendulum is sitting to the left, because that's what my displacement equation said, but my velocity is pointing to the right. It's moving right. And that's why that coordinate system is so powerful. All right, I'll see you on the next video.